Continuing on to part B, we want to maximize by the maximum speed of the particle, of particle one on the interval from zero to two. So remember from the problem above, V of T for our first particle is the function 4T cubed minus 24T. So if I'm trying to maximize that velocity, I need to take its derivative so v1 prime of t, which is a1 of t, is 12t squared minus 24. So if I find that critical value, t equals plus or minus square root 2. So let me do a sign check from 0 to 2. Only square root 2 falls in that interval. And we're comparing our velocity to its derivative. So if I plug in a number greater than square root 2, let's say um, so let's see remember square root of 2 is between square root of one and square root of four. So square root of two is between one and two. So if I plug in a number less than square root of two, I could plug in one. If I plug in one in here, I get a negative decreasing. If I plug in a number greater than square root of 2, uh, maybe square root of 3. Square root of 3 squared is 3. 12 times 3 minus 24 is a positive, increasing. So we see there is a relative min at t equals square root 2. But we're looking on a closed interval here, so we need to check our velocity. Um, at all these times. Now notice they're asking for speed. Speed is the absolute value of velocity. So let's find speed of zero is the absolute value of zero, which is zero. Speed at square root two is the absolute value 8 square root 2 minus 24 square root 2. I'm plugging in square root 2 in here equals 16 square root 2. And then if I want to check my speed at time equals 2, that's the absolute value of 32 minus 48, which is 16. So here, is my maximum speed. So particle one reaches a maximum speed of 16 square root two units per time at t equals square root two. So we notice that sometimes the max or min might happen in the interval or on the endpoints.